Hey, good morning, guys. Back at the shop here. We're uh, about ready to uh, line hone a uh, 302 Ford, and I'm going to say re-line re hone. Um, and uh, it's been, been done by another shop before. We'll go into that here in a little bit. And uh, let's get started with a prep, and I'll be... Okay, I kind of got cut off there. Let's get uh, started with a prep, and I've already uh, uh, tapped out half of these... Uh, bolt holes i'm just making sure there's nothing in there we don't want our bolts bottoming out it's always important to do that on line honing and typically i like to and being an engine builder i like to tap the head bolt holes and the main bolt holes the things that i'm doing when i work on in the shop because a lot of times i'm not assembling the engine but as I'm doing the machine work, I want to check this stuff. In this particular case, these holes are through holes. And I don't go all the way through. I just go to where my plug tap just starts to uh, hit the opening in the bottom. You can see it, this is... Uh, they call it a plug tack because it's tapered on the end. And I use machine grade taps. I don't use hardware store taps. That's a no. Uh, I use high speed steel, not carbon taps. We'll check, yep, we're just starting to go through the bottom there. And I'm sure many of you guys uh, know about how to tap holes. And ordinarily, I would put a little oil on this. Uh, these are really pretty good. I've got the block still a little bit oily from it's got some WD-40 on it, so we're good. Uh, probably can't really see on the tap, but. It's got a little bit where it cleaned a little bit out of the threads. Another thing I like to do is on the uh, registers where the cap set, I like to uh, file this, make sure they're flat, that the threads hadn't pulled up, hadn't kicked up a burr, anything that might keep the so another thing I always like to do, I like to uh, put just a, a slight chamfer on the bore, not not a not a huge. I'll get a close up of this in a minute, and then this way when you push the uh, bearings in the bore when you do this final assembly. And this may come out of there when we line hone it, depending on how much we have to take out. I'll come back and get a close up of this. You get these uh, I don't think whoever did this before, I don't think they did this, but that's okay, everyone's got their own way of doing things. We'll do a close-up on this. Always check your file to make sure your file's making good contact, because a lot of times the file has a bend in it. So as you can see there, we're, we're contacting pretty even. You're not trying to, we're not trying to, you can see like we have a little high spot right there. We're not trying to file that flat. All we're trying to do is get rid of the burrs. So you notice when I started, I flipped this file over. Because the other side, the, the file had a slight slight curvature. So so do that, check it. If it, if it doesn't look like it's contacting flat, it's probably not. Check your file. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this. You can see You can see how we had a little bit of uneven surface, especially back here by our cap. 
uh, back here on the back of the block. You see how we had a high spot along there? And I can feel a burr on there. And that's probably where, you know, it got set on the back or something. It kicked up a burr or swelled that material. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. That uh, kind of meets our, uh, what we like to see, we like to see and do. Since I know this is not flat back here, now you can hear that. Just kind of knock that burr off there. You can you can hit these registers if if you feel the need and you want to just do a slight burr on that. Be careful back here. Yeah, this block kind of has a little bit of road rash on it. They all do. They all have some. So, we'll, yeah, I feel happy uh, with this. Just kind of taking a little extra TLC. Another thing I like to do is where the thrust bearing goes, go ahead, make sure we don't have a burr on the where the thrust goes and when you slide your bearing in we're not you can hear that you can hear that files biting a little bit so there was a little bit of a so there you go we got a little bit of chamfer on there we cleaned that up make it kind of sanitary i'll be back Okay, I'm back. I don't think I was recording. Uh, you can see here where I have blue on this cap, and then we've sanded it off on a surface plate, and you can see where it's not touching the bluing. That cap was done on a, a belt sander. Here's another one. You can see where it's touching, where it rubbed the bluing off, and where the bluing still is. It's not touching. Uh, we do not do that. Uh, these caps have got, you can see that sanded off. And they put that on like a belt sander, probably like something they surface heads on. We don't like them for cylinder heads. I'm going to take this cap, I'll put some bluing on it, and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our bluing on there. We're going to let it dry just a minute. We'll be back when we go sand this. Okay, I'm back. You can see I blued that up. You can see where the cap is touching, right through this area. Let's look at the other side and see what we got. This was both done, you can see it's mainly touching on the outside here and, and like at an angle through there. Not touching on the inside at all. We're going to fix these and then we'll be back. Okay guys. I just put this in the cap grinder just to show you where that's touching. It's touching on the edge. So we're going to have to fix that cap and straighten it up because obviously the caps are machine crooked. We'll fix that up. Okay, guys, we're back. You can see how coarse ground those sides are. They're never very precision. But now we've got a good contact area all the way around so in my fixture and I'll come back and show you that I can locate that there and now that will set up at 90 degrees to the face okay guys first cap case in point we're touching right in through here look at that right in the middle. So I've squared that cap up. So uh, let's get these fixed and I'll be back. Okay, we've taken about five thousandths off. And you can see, get this in focus here. That leaving edge there, we're still not down. This is another good example of knowing what you're doing 
and Y. Uh, as you can see there, now that we've uh, filed all of our caps off, these we know these registers are fairly flat. That's a milled finish, it's not ground. But now when we grind our caps, we're gonna have 100% ground surface. And then of course we have a milled finish, and I understand with a milled finish you're not gonna get 100%. But we're gonna have as much possible contact area between this surface we can. So when this thing comes up under power, um, it's not going to be trying to make let the cap slide around on the main main in the registers here. I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to call this good. We're just starting to catch that edge right there. We just started clean that edge up back of our where the seal area is. This side looks pretty good. I don't want to cut too much. You know, this block's already been line honed, so we don't want to really change the crank center line a lot. We don't want to change the uh, crank center line a lot because, uh, you know, we still want our timing chain to fit tight. In this particular case, the chain that come off this motor fit pretty, uh, pretty good. But this engine here had less than 100 miles on it. And... Uh, and I, I'll go into later what, what happened to it, but uh, in the inspection of the block, uh, we found that the line bore was not to our liking. It certainly didn't like the way the caps were machined. So I'll be back, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here's another one. You can see it's just... It's a little bit twisted, touching in the middle, off to one side, and we're locating on this surface where I ground that. So we are now established perpendicularity from the side of that cap. Okay, I'm back. This is our thrust. You can see we're cutting right through the middle there. And I'm just praying that it will be straight to the thrust side and because uh, you never know what they did when they did it but anyways you can see the finish I have through there that that's an arc because that's got a grindstone and it's in a fixture anyways I'll... okay we're back you can see we've taken about five thousandths off Looks real good. That's nice. That cleaned up 100%. We're happy with that. Okay, guys, I'm back. We got our caps fitted to the block. Everything's oiled. And when I when I work on things, I work. Uh, I'm right-handed. I try to do everything the same way. So I start in the middle, away from me, and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 910. I work in a circle. I know you guys, everyone's got their own way. But the reason I do that, I do it on everything. So when after machine work's done, everything is torqued back exactly what the same way we built the motor. So we started out at 30. Usually I start out around 30, 35. I'm going to go to 50. We've got oil on our bolts, on the threads. We've got it on the, uh, right underneath the head of the bolt. So we have lubricity, so we don't have any dry or friction. We've cleaned our threads out. Our bolts are cleaned. So the only thing that's on there is oil. And these are 60 to 70. If they'll pull max, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to max.
I like this uh, snap-on wrench dial on the side. I really like the, you probably heard that positive uh, click mechanism. I really like that. Gives you a nice feel when you torque. I'm going to get a dial bore gauge set up and we'll check this and we'll be